There we are. So, I'm doing face tracking. And the camera's focused on my face. Poor camera. So, um, I said I would do a video of floors, and I'm going to. So, I'm going to start with doing an update of where things are at and what's next. Um, so, let me get out of the face following and go to a video. Exit. There we go. Flip the camera around. So, we're also going to put floor, wood floors in our bedroom. Tourette wants it. I really am not that. It's sixes for me. I'm ambivalent. It'd be easier to, in some ways, and more difficult than others, to have hardwood floors in the bedroom. It, and we're going to leave this room we're calling the den, where AV plays games and we store junk. And this room, which is our spare room, which is kind of holding the crap from the living room. Um, I really should be panning this camera better. Yeah, there we go. So it's kind of holding some of the junk from the living room while we get going. So this is what the floor looks like so far. I haven't really done anything with this far right edge um, because I don't have the transition moldings and basically I was just trying to maintain the same line all the way down to the south side of the house where it meets this wall. And if you look down here, you can see this is the floor I was working on previously. It goes all the way to the windows. And then all of this junk is the stuff that was here in the dining room that I'm standing in, out of the way. So today I'm going to work on putting flooring down in the dining room from the wall to this cabinet edge so that we can gain our floor space back and move all the dining room crap back over and be more comfortable. And then we can attack the rest of the floor in the kitchen. And we found that there's old linoleum in the kitchen. And we also figured out that the bamboo hardwood floor goes all the way across underneath the cabinets. So we called an audible, so to speak, and decided that we're just gonna trim the wood floor around the edges of the cabinets. And we're gonna put this new wood trim up to that point. And then later this year, yeah, more of the bamboo. I kind of aligned it with the edge of the oven. And um, at the end of the year, supposedly, most likely, hopefully, we'll, um, be installing cabinets. So all of these cabinets and all this stuff will come out. And part of the reasons why we're gonna wait, um, well, actually we have water damage. There was a water leak behind the refrigerator, the old one, and it flooded. And there's mold on these boards that I've painted over with this plastic coat, kind of a sealer. Um, but there's water damage underneath the floor where the where the refrigerator is underneath this cabinet here and then there's water damage underneath those cabinets going over there so most likely we'll have to replace those boards so we'll just rip it all out um, it's only 130 bucks a box for the wood floor um, wood flooring so you know we might waste a couple two three four hundred dollars in floor but the idea is we're going to fix it so it's walkable and convenient in the off chance that we don't replace the cabinets in the spring. Then at least we'll have a, a, a continuous and comfortable floor um, during that time if we have to delay the cabinets. If not, well then we'll change the cabinets early and 
finish the whole entire job. All right, so I'm gonna set this camera down now. Ugh. Facing this direction. Maybe I'll put it a little closer for now. Uh, bear with me as I figure out the video thing here. I'm going to redo the gimbal, so I'm going to stop and come back. There we go. Now the gimbal is straight. And if you notice the white legs, like this one right here, um, it supports the table, but I'm going to be putting wood floor under it. So I cut these two by fours and two by threes to support the table. And as I put flooring down, so that one will be coming down first and then I can knock out one of the wood legs and then move this direction and, uh, remove the two by four legs as I put the, um, Ikea adjustable legs down. So that's the plan anyways. So we're gonna take some shots from this angle and then we'll change it up a little bit. I've gotten better at getting used to not having to be on the floor. I can do a lot of this standing up, but because I'm tall, I have to bend over. This piece, because it's under the table, of course I have to get on my knees. But I've got the um, I got the process down. I got the technique down. So that I can move along much quicker. Fire nail and that end, this end scoots out from the board that's up against. So you have to tap it back into place before you send the next nail. Also, you have to, how hard you hit this button on the nailer is proportional to how far the nails or the staples go in. So if you hit it lightly, it's only going to drive the staple in partially. So you have to hit it with intent to get the nail, excuse me, staple driven fully into the edge. And here we go. to show you something here. Uh. You can see that little silver staple in there. And basically it's tongue and groove edge. So when you drive the staple in, let me get this camera going. It's hard to see this. But tongue and groove means that there's a, a piece that sticks out on one end away from the board. There's a little, what they call a tongue, that sticks out. And then there's a groove that it fits into on the other side. And that's what holds the boards all together, mostly. And then on this edge where the tongue sticks out, the staples go in above the tongue. And if you can see that one there, one of the pitfalls 
is that sometimes that tongue will crack and hang down and then it makes it harder to tap a board into place. And the main thing I'm looking to do now is pay attention to the colors so they don't dramatically change with a hugely dark board in a field of light colored board. So I'm matching the colors and then I'm offsetting the seams. So there's a seam here and then I offset the seam here. And so when I pick the next board, there'll be a seam here. And if I am not careful when I put a board down, like I just did here, of course, we're good on this seam because it's against the straight edge. But then if you look over here now, I've just lined it up with a seam and that's what you're not supposed to do is line up the seams. So I'll put that board back and get another one out so that we're always continuously staggering. Yeah, please excuse my camera work. And we're continuously staggering the seam. All right. Now let me set this back down and go back to what I was doing. I'm sure the more I'll use this camera, the better I'll get at. Manipulating it and moving it around. Okay, can you hear me now? Seems I forgot to put on my microphone. Um, hopefully I can figure out how to overdub all the stuff I've made already and uh, explain the things that I was trying to show you after the fact. Alrighty, so next board. Seems uh, are not lined up. Color looks close. So we tap it against the other board, then set it against the one I just put in so there's no groove there. And then send a staple. Tap, tap. And there I had a staple. It's a little proud of the edge. Let's see. Now I gotta get a board that goes up to the edge of the wall. Right here. So now I'm gonna have to cut this one down a little bit to fit. Pencil, 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 where are you? So, I have to mark for the wall this way. 
So I have a gap against this wall. And then I have to mark it for the gap against this side. So I gotta go cut a notch out of this board. And I'm gonna pause and I'll be right back. Okay, back from the garage. Yeah. I decided to get a little closer for this part just to show you. So what I ended up doing was cutting a notch on this board to fit that corner of the wall. We've even discussed tearing this piece of wall out, but um, I just made a huge mistake. I cut the wrong end of the board. And the notch is supposed to be over here and not over here because then the tongue and groove doesn't line up. I got the tongues facing the tongues. But if I can reproduce this cut, I could save face. It's not a big deal because I'll eventually need a board where I have to cut it off to match the bamboo. So I can just set this one aside and it could be one of the boards that I use to trim for aligning the bamboo. Now I just need to find one that's the same length. And a good color. This one is a good candidate. So now I need to make sure that I turn it so that, no, nope, that's not long enough. I turn it so that the tongue and grooves are in the right location for the marking that I gotta make. Alrighty. So there is the length lined up. Make a mark for the, this cut. And then match it up this direction. And then I can mark for this side. Alrighty. I'm gonna pause again and go cut this board. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> Here's the board with the notch cut on the correct corner. Now I'll place it against these boards and tap it into place. I'm looking for approximately a half inch of over here. So I marked it so I've got about a quarter inch. And then as I align the boards and knock them into place, I'll achieve the gap that I'm looking for against the wall. And this gets covered up by trim later. Alrighty. Move it back just a tidge. Get the nail gun. Can you hear my compressor down in the garage? I had to buy a new compressor. My other one was going bad. And then I discovered that there's a, a service life on the tanks for the compressors. I can't remember if it's 10 years or 20 years, but you're supposed to throw them away because of the fact that moisture collects in them and they rust from the inside out. You may never know when you're gonna burst your tank. So, it was worth replacing it for functionality and safety reasons, I guess. Alrighty, so I'm gonna set the camera up now and then I'm, on, I'm gonna set it to do a time lapse. So, 
Um, I'm not going to be talking anymore. I might narrate. I'm going to figure out how to do that, but um, it'll just be me throwing the floor down, and we'll zoom through this quickly, hopefully. Howdy. I'm recording, but it's on hyperlapse. I don't know what speed to put it on, so I'm going to test it. Oh, that's cool. So it, you know, slows the frame rate down, but when you view it, it's all sped up and happens faster for the viewer. How did it go with Ravy? Okay. So I was going to film the hyperlapse and then go back and look at it real quick. Mom's on her way down. Alexa, hang up.
That's very close. <clears throat> That's better. Yeah, solid.